In this lesson, we are going to be looking at exponential growth and decay. This is section 8.8 .8 in the Algebra 2 book. There are two formulas that we're going to learn for exponential growth and decay. And this is the first one. It's A equals P times E to the power of RT. We will use this formula when we talk about things growing or decaying continuously. They'll actually tell you in the problem that it's growing or decaying continuously or they'll be talking about um, you know some kind of bacteria growing or a population growing anything that's like biological that would grow or decay continuously over time would be one that we would use this formula for okay now A stands for the amount that we have later on P stands for the initial amount that's the one that we start with E is, is E, it's an actual number like pi is an actual number, so just leave that as E and don't replace that as anything. We'll use the E on our calculator when we get to that variable. R is our rate of growth or decay. If you're increasing or growing, then your rate is positive. If you're decaying or decreasing, then your um, R value is negative. Usually they give it to you as a percentage, and you have to move your decimal two places back to the left to change it to decimal form. However, be careful because they might not give it to you as a percentage. They might give it to you already as a decimal. T stands for time. So in this first example, we're looking at the city of Knoxville, Tennessee. It's growing at a continuous rate of 0.7% every year. Notice how they told us in the problem that it was a continuous rate of growth so that we know we're using this formula for this problem. The uh, population was 585,960 in 1990, and we want to predict the population in 2014. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is plug the numbers we have into this formula. P is the initial amount of the population that we started with. Here that's 585,960. Leave E as E, that's the button on our calculator, that's at second division. We're going to use that E. It actually stands for 2.71828. And, uh, now in our exponent we have R and T and we're going to put parentheses around them so that we know that we're multiplying them together. R is um, 0 .007 as a decimal, moving that decimal two places to the left, and then times 24 years. Now 24 years is the amount of time that you have from 1990 to 2014. So I put 24 years in for time. Now pick up your calculator, type these numbers in, that we uh, have used to put into this formula and we get that the population was 693,154 people in the year 2014. Now it actually came out to be decimal and I rounded to a whole person because we don't want to keep a, a decimal amount of a person we want to round to a whole person. Okay on number two <clears throat> we have the number of rabbits in a wildlife preserve is estimated to be continuously increasing at a rate of 12%. See that continuously increasing. So that's why we're using this formula. How many rabbits are in the preserve in five year, years if the population is now 350,000 rabbits? Okay, so we're looking for the amount later on. We started with 350,000. That goes in for P. E is going to stay E. And then in the exponent, with parentheses around the R and the T together, R is 0.12, that's the decimal version of 12%, and then times T, which is five years, or times five years. Type this into your calculator just as it looks, and we get that the population of rabbits is 637,742 rabbits, and again, I rounded to a whole number of rabbits so we didn't have to cut the poor rabbit in half or anything. Okay, try number three and pause until you're ready to go over it. Okay, number three, it says radium decays at a rate of negative 0 0.004 when time is expressed in days. Find the amount present after 28 years in a sample that contains 60 grams of radium initially. Now, they didn't tell us that it was continuously decaying. However, we're talking about radium, a chemical substance. It's not going to decrease you know, at, a, at the end of a year. It's not going to say, bam, I'm at the end of the year or I'm at the end of my 28 days you know, or I'm at the end of my 28 years, I've got to decrease this amount now. No, it's going to decrease continuously all the time. So this is something that we would want to use this formula for. The amount that we started with is P, that's 60 grams. E is going to stay E. In parentheses, we put the R and the T. Now R is a negative because we're decaying. It's 0 .004 
We don't have to move that decimal. It's not given to us as a percentage. It's given to us in decimal form already. Time is 28 years. Type this in your calculator. We get 53.6 grams of that radium left. Okay, now look at number four. A certain chemical has a decay rate of negative 0.377 when time is expressed in days. How long will it take 500 grams to decay to 200 grams? Again, we're talking about a chemical, so we know we're using the, the A equals P times E to the power of RT formula. And uh, our rate is, is negative here because we're decaying. It's already expressed as a decimal without having to move that decimal over any because they didn't give it to us as a percentage. Now, this one's a little different because we're trying to figure out how long it takes 500 grams to go down to 200 grams where we're solving for time or trying to figure out what time is. So we have three answer choices, 1.4 days, 2.4 days, and 3.4 days. And what you want to do is you want to plug in the information into each one of these time frames using time as 1.4 days, 2.4 days, and 3.4 days. Now the correct answer is going to be the one where when you work it out, you get the answer that's closest to 200 grams or it's going to be, you know, right at 200 or really, really close to it. And the one that works out for this problem is answer choice B. 2.4 days gets you really, really close to 200 grams and that is the uh, correct answer. So try five and see if you can do number five. It says you invest $8,000 in an account that compounds interest continuously at 6%. How long will it take the account to reach $9,500? Okay, plug the information into your formula for each time frame, 2.9 years, 9.2 years, 3.8 years, and uh, see which one gets you closest to $9,500. And that's the first answer choice. 2.9 years gets you closest to $9,500. Okay, the, here's the other formula that we have. This formula is A equals P parentheses 1 plus R over N to the power of NT. And this formula is not used for continuous growth or decay. It's used for growth or decay that happens at specific times, every year, every month, every quarter, every day. Something that grows or decays at a specific time. Usually this is going to be money growing in an account or money decaying from the value of a car or from the value of a house or something like that. So a family bought a 50 acre piece of land for $800 per acre. The land appreciates 3% per year. How long will it take the land to be worth $1,000 per acre? A lot of the variables in this formula are the same variables that we referred to in the previous formula. A is still the amount that we have later on. Here that would be $1,000. P is the initial amount that we start with which here is eight hundred dollars. Um, in parentheses you have one which is the number one plus R that's still your percentage here the percentage is three percent we're going to change that back to decimal form and say point zero three the new variable here is N N is the number of times a year interest compounds if it's once a year you put one if it's every month that's twelve times a year so you would put twelve if it's every quarter that's four times a year so you would put four if it's daily, that's 365 times a year, so that's 365, and so on. And then in the exponent, n is the same n that you used in the bottom of the fraction, and t is still time. So here we have initially starting with 800, and then parentheses 1 plus our rate, which is 0 0.03, over 1, because it's compounding once a year. And then in parentheses of our exponent, we have 1 times 3.7, or 1 times 7.6 or 1 times 9.6 whichever one is the correct answer we'll know the correct answer because it's going to get us close to a thousand dollars let's try typing in each one of these formulas with the numbers in them see which one gets you closest to a thousand dollars and B is the one that works 7.6 years alright in this last example we're still using the information from number six but we want to compound our interest every month instead of every year. So this time, when you plug the numbers into your formula, n is going to be 12, standing for 12 times a year. So 800 and then parentheses 1 plus 0 0.03 over 12, not 1 this time, to the power of 12 times 2.3, 2 
12 times 7.5 or 12, point, 12 times 6.1. You're trying to figure out which one gets you closest to $1,000. B, 7.5 years is the correct answer.